We created this video to share our experience building a slip form stem wall out of local field stone for our Cobb and Straw Bale home in Minnesota. Before starting our build, we researched other uses of slip form building. They were helpful in demonstrating basic techniques for the process, but our project posed a special challenge, and that is that our walls are curved. All of the examples of slip form building we found were for rectangular houses with straight lines. We realized that we would have to develop our own flexible form if we wanted to use this method. For our project, we used a product called hardboard. Hardboard is a type of fiberboard. We bought several sheets of hardboard, cut them the long way into 2 by 8 foot sections, and used those same boards over and over again to build all of the exterior and interior stem walls. The walls we created using this slip form method were 2 feet high, 6 inches below ground or grade, and 18 inches above grade. They would later support the weight of our straw bale and cob walls. We placed the hardboard where we wanted the exterior and interior edges of the walls to be, which in our case was 20 inches apart, and then secured them with wooden stakes on the outside and metal strapping over the top, both of which were screwed into place. For insulation in our northern climate, we placed 4 inches of foam insulation down the center of the form. This foam insulation in the middle meant we were effectively creating two walls, one on each side of the insulation. At that point, we were ready to start putting the stones in place. Because we were using field stone that rarely had flat surfaces, we usually put the flattest face to the hardboard, as these would be the visible faces of the wall on both the inside and outside of the house. After setting one layer of rocks, we would stuff rags over the top edge of each stone face to stop the concrete from running down the face as much as possible. And every couple of feet, we drilled a hole through the insulation and pushed a rebar rod through it that would serve as a connector between the two walls on each side of the insulation. Then we filled in that layer with cement and proceeded to do the next layer, following the basic stone laying principle of 1 over 2 and 2 over 1, adding more stones, concrete, rebar, and rags as we went. Generally, it took three layers done in this manner for our two-foot-high stem wall. We kept the forms in place overnight. The next morning, we would unscrew the metal strapping and wooden stakes holding the forms in place and remove the forms. When the forms were first removed, the walls looked quite messy. To create a nice looking wall, we would pull the rags off the rocks and then chip away the excess concrete to reveal the stone faces. It was essential to do this chipping right away in the morning, while the concrete was still not fully hardened. With two of us working, we usually completed an 8 foot section per day. After chipping the previous day's section in the morning, we would use the rest of the day to lay the next 8 foot section. So what I'm doing is chipping back some of this concrete. Yesterday we laid this wall using the slip form technique for stonework. And what you need to do is come back the next morning and pull your forms off. And what you'll find is this concrete will have mushroomed or spooged around your stones. So what you need to do while it's still tender and, and fresh is to take a hammer or a chisel and chip this back until you get the kind of reveal that you want on your stones. How far or how much you reveal is going to be something that you leave up to your own individual uh, taste. Some folks will take these a lot deeper, but you always want to make sure you leave enough to support your stones. But you can either just chisel it out so that it's barely cleaned off or you can take it way back. We're taking it back about a half inch into our over our stone, so we get a nice clean, clean look. The uh, slip form technique has worked really well for us. We completed the whole uh, circuit of our house around the outside, and we're finishing up our interior walls that we need to get set in place. We were able to find a uh, a type of plywood called hardboard 
which happens to be very flexible and so it allowed us to do rounded shapes and to follow long curved lines that our, that our particular house has. And so I would highly recommend it uh, for anyone who's doing more rounded organic type shapes. It's worked really well for us. Nothing. Uh, this is how we fill all our water, collect all our water to mix our concrete batches with. Today, we're trying to go after a new world record. We carry six buckets at one time. We'll see how it goes. Helen! <laughs> it works! And what are you doing, Wilson? I am chipping concrete off of the last section of wall stonework that we have to do on this house. It's Hooray. a big day, big day. We're gonna have a fire tonight, burn all our forms, all our rags, everything, and celebrate this first big step in building our house.